Daniel chapter 10, verse 21. It says, But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. Then we see Michael, your prince. The scripture of truth that's going to be noted is chapter 11. Also I, now this is the angel of the Lord in chapter 10. This is Jesus still speaking. The first year of Dyrus, the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him, that's Michael. The Archangel. Okay, we're going to go into a bunch of stuff here that Christians don't like. They don't care. They don't want. They don't suffer. They don't read. But it's Bible. And we're going to come to one character. Possible. That they would make a movie. You would love to go see the movie. And maybe see her half undressed. Maybe fully undressed. But the thing is, we are in chapter 11. Again, here's a chapter that is historic for us. And yet for Daniel and for us, it's prophecy. As we go through this, we're going to go through a history. And yet this is going to come to pass again in the tribulation period. So you say, well, Stiley, you didn't say that. Back then, you said this. Because there's a pathetic, there's a prophetic subject yet to come. But again, for us, in 2022, there is history. It's called a double application. So what we have, now will I show thee the truth. March that right back to 1021. Behold, there shall stand up three kings in Persia. We'll, we'll go through this in a And the four shall be far richer than they all. And by history, now look at all the details. And then when I go in to read you the details, the details come to be true, truth, and accurate. Only God knows what has already happened for knowledge before it even happens. And the double application is for those in 2022 we are now. It's going to happen again. So we get in trouble when we have two things going on in 2022 in America and worldwide. We're erasing, we are editing the truth, history, because we don't like it. We are editing, we are removing, we are adding, we are, sub, we are footnoting the Word of God, because we don't like it. And don't get, oh, make it easier and all that. No, you just don't like it. You come to a part in the Bible that, that, that kicks you in the shin. I'm too lazy to look up in a dictionary what a word means. That's what it's about. So here we go. We're going to go into some kings. By his strength through the riches he shall stir up against the realm of Grecia. This would be Persia versus Greece. A mighty king, and you know what's so funny? You get preachers in the Greek, in the Greek, but when you come to Greek history in Daniel chapter 11, they don't teach their congregation. Why? Number one, they don't know. Number two, they don't care. Number three, possibility, the congregation doesn't care. And when this idiot Stiley gets up there, who supposedly he doesn't know nothing, he gets in there and teaches the Bible, the exact truth of the Bible. Well, and that's not what my scholars say. That's not what my preacher said. That's not what my school said. Okay. We'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and when God tells me I'm right and you're wrong, I'll giggle. I'll giggle. 
And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule. That shall rule. King. Rulership. Not president. Shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven. Not to his posterity, that's children, nor according to his dominion which he rule. For his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others besides those. You say, what does that mean? I'll, I'll help you in a moment. And the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes will get all the answers by history. And he shall, yeah, he shall be strong above him. And have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. At the end of year, dominion. You know, I remember when I was back in Connecticut, I worked for the newspaper. And uh, let me show you archaic words of the Bible. You see, I had to go to the nuclear power plant to deliver newspapers, and it was called dominion. It used to be called millstone, but they they changed the word to dominion. So what did I do when I got home one day from work? I got me a dictionary out and I looked up the word dominion. You don't need to change the whole Bible. Get yourself an 1828 dictionary. And get yourself a Bible pen. You can find them at Bible Baptist Church and Bookstore in Pensacola, Florida. I can't give you name. This one's been so worn out. I can't read it. And these you can write in your Bible, and they're good for many, many years, but they do fade out, or your Bible will fall apart. I'm on my fourth Bible right now. Okay, look up the word. I had a problem with dominion. I looked it up. In the end of years, they shall join themselves together. For the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not... No, you talk about the South of America. South, the South, the South. The, there's another South in the Bible. The South of Israel is called Judah. And we have a South here. We'll look at it in a moment. The, queen, the daughter of the South shall come to the king of the North to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the power of, her, of the arm. Military. Neither shall... I mean... You got guns, what do they call it? They call it arms. What's the military called? Called army. Now, is that so hard? Now, what if God came up and said, you know, the army's going to come in in the future, and we're going to have bazookas and flamethrowers and tanks and uh, helicopters. Well, how many years of people having a Bible would not understand flamethrower? Right? Flamethrower came up, I believe, it was World War II, or even maybe possibly the, the Vietnam War. I, no, World War, yeah, World War One had flamethrowers. They were they were discovered in, in World War One. Well, how many years did it take for someone to go through by flamethrower, flamethrower? What is that? But there are Bible words that we all know what they're talking about. You know, the Bible talks about armor. Okay. Well, then they put armor into a suit. You, you, you wear a suit of armor. Well, then you got military vehicles. They are armor-plated. That's not so hard. There are people that make the, bar, the Bible harder than it is so they can make an excuse that, oh, I can't read it. But I can go read a mystery novel or I can read, you know, nonsense. So she's got an arm, neither shall he stand nor his arm. But she shall she give it up, and they that brought her, and he that begat her, all these guys, we're going to do it in a moment, he that strengthened her in all these times. But out of a branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate, which shall come with an army. And shall enter into the forces of the king of the north, and shall deal against them, shall prevail, and shall also carry captives into Egypt their gods, with their princes and their precious vessels of silver and gold. And he shall continue more years than the king of the north. Now, hopefully, 
I will remember, I forget, to put our family website address in the description. Because when you, because these papers I have are on our download page. And you say, well, Stolly, how, how do I spell that? Stolly, what, what, what? I remember to, to download these. I just re don't remember to put the link. But the Hayward family website, you'll find the Daniel studies. And you'll find download. And you go down to downloads. These Daniel notes are there. Okay? So in Daniel chapter 10, verse 14, we have the latter days and thy people. So this is not Daniel's time. And thy people is always the Jews. Daniel is a Jew. Events of the Jews before the second advent of the Jesus Christ, not the first advent. So that is what you call the double application. Because some of these events happened B.C., before Christ. And yet there is a second application that goes even further. Double prophecy for Daniel, and for us today, it is historic and it is prophecy. And there are double applications as they were in Daniel 7 and Daniel 9. You have to rightly divide. All right, 11, 1 again, that says, The angel of the Lord, as it was in chapter 10, Jesus Christ. And in 11, verses 2 and 3, now you start getting the changeover. You've gone from the silver chest of the image to the brass waist of that, that image of Nebuchadnezzar's dream of chapter 2. We've gone from the winged lion to the bear, the chapter 7. Now, you remember chapter 7, we said that winged lion it is uh, the griffin. It's England. We talked about the bear being Russia much later than when it happened historically. His, his, historic is Grecia and Persia. Later on, you got the nations that are in power today, England, uh, Russia, the United States, we talked about, and the Antichrist. We're living out Daniel chapter 7 right now, though Daniel 7, Daniel 11 has already laid out, but it didn't lay out yet. But it laid out, double application. God is great. No man could figure this out. And from the ram to the rough go, I mean the rough ego, in Daniel chapter 8. Now, before Persia ended, it had three more kings. And we saw that in chapter 10, verse 1. But we also saw in 11, 1. There's three kings. Number one, Atherus, Atherus, Ezra 4, 6. Artaxerxes, Ezra 4, 7, and 8. And this will be put on our website. Dyrus, Ezra 4, 24. Arxus, 1, invades Greece, 480 B.C. Now we have another problem. Now somebody may come up and say, you know, Stalin, that, that don't match. <laughs> oh, I got you. You're... I know. Clarence Larkin, a lot of scholars hate, yet steal his information. Clarence Larkin tells us the kings of Ezra are titles, not actual names. That's the problem. Pharaoh is a title. It is never a name. That's another problem people have with the Bible. Well, it, can, it may not be the name. It may be a title. We have, I don't know how many presidents we have, but I mean, we had Jefferson, we had Biden, we have Trump, we have Clinton, 
Fifth Washington, but we call them presidents. President is a title Jefferson, Lincoln are names. And you can say both. You can say President Lincoln and Abe went to the theater and was killed. That is a tragic history event of American presidency. Now you see how I've taken a name and I've taken a title. With the title and the name. Clarence Larkin says that the actual name Cambyses, and I'm not going to pronounce these right. Sideo, like I said, download. You can download the sheet. When you go to our website and click the link, it's going to have you download it, and it'll be downloaded. Some of them to Word, PowerPoint, or whatever I put it in. Mesibles, Summerdus, and Dyrus, his stats to peace. All right, eleven three. Chapter 11, verse 3. Seven or eight Persian kings, depending on what list you use. Not that it's different. Imagine somebody, if the Lord tarries in 2030, imagine what kind of history they're going to get from America when you erase Lee, and yet he's over here. And you favor this man and you praise Mr. King and all his glory for, for the black people and yet when you look at the truth and the Baptist truth that they found that this guy was a sexual pervert you find that on my Facebook I think yesterday or the day before for another reliable man I don't know if I, if I can give his name he put stuff out there, and we we both I I, I uh, shared his hard work and on, on people. I gave you the other side of history of Mr. King, the sexual perversion, and his attitude truly to God, though he be a rebel. They don't teach about that when they talk about their king. So there'll be coming a day when, depending what book you read, what library you visit, you're going to get different stories on different people. Some of it will be true, some of it will be half the truth, and some of it will be lies. Some of it will be abridged, or something will be bridged. We got the same thing here. It's not hard. It's not wrong. Though it could be wrong. You know, the winner of a nation of a war, Germany can't really write that much about World War II because they lost. America come up and say, well, you know, great wars and everything like that because we won. In the north and south of the, Civil Amer the, the, the American Civil War, the northern newspapers were lying about the south. south. The southern newspapers were lying about the north. So when you, oh, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to study, you know, a, a particular battle that happened in the Civil War, and I'm going to go to the newspapers. Well, friend, you're going to get different stories. And then when you find actual diaries of the soldiers. Well, the American side diary is going to be a little more luxurious. Then the losers of the of the battle of the South, or depend who won that battlefield. It's an attitude. So, depending what list you, it's a hundred and sixty-five year period, and it goes to the rise of Alexander the Great. Eight twenty-one. Daniel 821, the great horn of the rough goat. 
And it goes into the broken four winds of Daniel 8.8 8 in verse 22. Go back. Get the videos. Or the audios. Whichever one you do. And listen to our study of Daniel. Actually listen to all the studies of Daniel. But right here, going back to Daniel 8. When Alexander the Great dies in the drunken state of alcoholism. His four generals take over. Well, tonight we're going to look at one of them generals. We're doing a history lesson. You heard of Alexander the Great. We talked about Alexander the Great in the Bible, though he's not named. It amazes me when I was in public school, I learned about the pharaohs of Egypt uh, and all those. But I never don't remember ever learning about the pharaoh that helped Joseph. I never read about the Pharaoh that gave Israel a hard time. That sought Moses for killing a man. I never read about the Pharaoh that God kicked his butt. With all the plagues and signs in the Red Sea. But that's history. And that's history where the public school systems. No we can't talk about that. We can't show you the Bible because then we would prove that the Bible's right and we don't want the Bible right when we send a rover to Mars looking for light. As I said, I read the other day, NASA, no, scientists have discovered what people see after they die. I know what they see. If you're saved, you'll be absent from the body, present with the Lord, and if you're lost, you're going to be in hell. That's what you're going to see. Not to, they'll probably tell you some other crap. But that's the fact. So we read about the great horn in the, in the, and it was broken into four horns. Here we move on in history and Bible and prophecy. 11.5. Daniel 11.5. Here we go. The king of the south. Ptolemy 1. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spell his name. P-T-O-L-E-M-Y 1. The first one. It said one of his princes. Now here we go. Let God tell us. Selkus. S-E-L-E-U-C-U-S. Noctur. Now part of me is Cyprus Noctur. Is, is the main character tonight. N-I-C-A-T-O-R. He was a general of Alexandria's cavalry. Who aided Ptolemy as Pharaoh of Egypt? Now, okay, Ptolemy was in Egypt and he ruled as a Pharaoh with the help of Seleucus Nectar, and I'm saying the names wrong, I apologize, who was a general of Alexander the Great. Well, he became prince helping Ptolemy as Pharaoh. Well, we got the definition of a prince. It's an aid to a king. The Bible told us that, and history tells us that. Secoius, conquering ba Babylon, Secoius took over the eastern Alexandria's uh, empire, broke into the four horns. We're looking at two of the horns. We're looking at Egypt, now we're looking at Babylon to the eastern empire. Syria, because he goes from Syria to the Indus River. Verse 5, it says, Shall be strong above him and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. So Cullius' rule was greater, get it, than Ptolemy. Now look at the scriptures. The scriptures told us, this man that was under Ptolemy, a prince, will come into a rule and authority, and his rule and authority or dominion is going to be greater than Ptolemy. And this happened in history. Before it happened, God told us it would happen. Why do you serve God? Why do you love God? Why do you serve the King James Bible? Prophecy. 
no religious person, no human being, no tea leaves or crystal balls or whatever can have the foreknowledge of the Almighty God that is my Father and the Almighty God that is my Savior and the Almighty God, the Holy Spirit that indwells me. Nobody can know like God. You realize the fact is, if God never told Moses what happened in Genesis, we wouldn't even know what happened. And we wouldn't know about Adam and Eve. And yet there are prophecies in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That brings us to Jesus Christ. We are looking at prophecies here again that will bring us to the tribulation period and will bring us to the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are looking at world leaders right now. There's history. We will look at world leaders that are coming that will come to the Antichrist. And I'll tell you, once the Antichrist comes to be in the tribulation period, in the great tribulation, that even the average Christian is like, ooh, I read that in the Bible. Wow, it happened as God said in the King James 1611 Bible. Okay, so verse 6 of chapter 11 of Daniel. The end. That's always the second advent. So there are events what we're reading, not only history, but it's also prophecy for us and Daniel, which has already happened. That'll be in the tribulation period. Double application. You see why this is not taught in churches? You think your average pastor knows what we're talking about right now? And, and they will go, well, you know, you couldn't say his name right. You didn't even know his name. Give me credit for looking it up and give me credit for trying to pronounce his name. Rather, let's talk about easy things that Christians love. You thought I was going to say Easter. Rendering reading is, all right, here's what many say. 11.6, Daniel 11.6. Ready? Now, this is where a Christian will pay money, I'll show you in a moment, at a movie theater. Ptolemy 2. We had Ptolemy 1, now we got Ptolemy 2. In the movies, they call that a sequel. Philadelphia. Now notice this, notice this. P-H-I-L-A-D-E-P-H-U-S. Do you know there's a period in the church called Philadelphia? Do you know that there's a city, Europe, I can't remember what, in Europe called Philadelphia? There was a church there? Pay attention to that. We're going to see more. We're going to see prophecy laid out even in our time. It's Philadelphia gives us to a city that the Apostle John writes to. That's one of the seven churches. We're not done. History of God through the Bible and actual history that God foreknew will bring us to the prophecy of the church age. Wow. You know what comes after the church age? The tribulation period. Now watch this. Given his daughter Bernice over to wed Mary Antich Antichus Theus, T H E U S, for peace between the two. All right, this is what Daniel 11 says. Potamus has a daughter named Bernice. Bernice. He wants her to wed this ruler, Antichus Theus. And this will bring peace between the two kingdoms. Some call, here we go, ready? Some call Bernice the famous Cleopatra. Now a Christian will buy a movie ticket and expensive popcorn and a soda to go watch a movie about Egypt and Cleopatra and the possibilities of hope this woman would be half naked or at least her boobs would be too big for her outfit while she plays with snakes. 
and the love affair of Mark Anthony. That's going to come up later. Not tonight, but later. Your thrill for a movie or for a book about Cleopatra and Mark Anthony, God tells you it's prophecy, and God told you it actually happened with no science fiction, with no fiction at all. Those movies are fiction. Because they'll throw us in there, they'll throw things in there to get your attention, to get your sexual peak of this woman half naked and all that. And we gotta add a little more stuff to Mark Anthony, because else you wouldn't pay money to come back and see it again. Or get the C D or the video, V VHS, I'm old. When it comes out in the bookstore. And God just lays it out, lays it out as it is, there it is. So, stop at a hundred Baptist churches. Now, pick on America. Stop at a hundred Baptist churches in America and say, listen, is Moses in the Bible? Any hundred Baptist churches, stop, get ten Baptists, uh, one Baptist church, and you'll have a thousand answers. Say, is Moses in the Bible? I hope you'll get an answer of yes for everybody. Is Daniel in the, in the Bible? Okay, yeah. David? Okay, yeah. Uh, Jonah? Yeah. How about Cleopatra? Is she in the Bible? Well, she's the one that had to make it. You know, she dressed herself. No, that was Jezebel. I don't know if Jezebel. I don't think she's in the Bible. Have you ever watched a movie about Cleopatra and Mark Antony? Oh, yeah. Have you ever read in the Bible about Cleopatra? I don't think so. Let me tell you, friend, I've never seen a movie about Cleopatra. I have read about Cleopatra. I've read all the way through my Bible from Genesis to, to Revelation since 2000. And then studying, I had to take Daniel as a course at my institute. I redid my course of Daniel. As a family, many years ago, we went through the book of Daniel. We are going through the book of Daniel again. I've surely read about Cleopatra. I never went to one of her movies. Or a movie about her. Antichus had to change the page. Now here... This is not Hollywood. This is God, okay? God knows human nature. Antitus had to divorce his present wife. See, God knows what people do. The guy was married. Pontimo II brought his daughter to him. His name being Philadelphius, Philadelphia. He said, I want you to marry my daughter for peace, but I know you're married, so you got to divorce that woman. Do you dare to know what that what his wife's name was? Are you ready? Have you read your Bible? Do you know the name of the wife that was divorced or to be divorced for Cleopatra? Her name was Laodicea. The city of Laodicea was named for this woman. We had Philadelphia. Now we got Laodas, Laodice. This is all you can get. You can download this, Laodicea. Now, how did you get that in order? Because John lays it out Philadelphia and Laodicea. How did you get that? That's the church age. We are now in the Laodicean church age right now. Guess what's next? The end times, the tribulation period, the second advent, Jesus Christ. So, and he, not only did he have to divorce her, but he would have to denounce her children as hares. His wife and his children he would have to, to forsake and give up to go to Bernice, who they say is Cleopatra, and her children to take the throne. Man, you don't need soap operas. You need the Bible. 
Okay? The soap operas and Satan steal from the Bible. But she shall not retain the power of her arm, written in 6, verse 6, neither shall she stand nor his arm, but she shall be given up. And they that brought her, and he that begat her. Okay, here's the Bible. The arm, the strength of the proposed event to the throne, divorce this woman, get rid of those children, Bring up Bernice or Pierre Pratchett. <clears throat> when he died, he that begat her. Antiochus, this is the guy who was supposed to marry this woman and, and Bernice and to have peace and get rid of his wife and his children. This man, his ex, Laodicea, poisoned her former husband, a murderer, and had Bernice and her children killed. She placed her, Laodicea, and her son, Seleucus Kalinakus on the throne. So when Philadelphia set up this thing for his daughter Bernice and in, in Antiochus and his wife Letizia set this whole thing up in the end, Antiochus was poisoned. He was killed by Ladeus, who was called Laodicea, the city. Philadelphia goes off into history. Laodicea comes up, and her and her children are in power. A complete reversal of what was supposed to be. The agreement. That woman said, uh-uh. 11.7. Branch of her roots. It's the relatives of Bernice. Or, if I her, her family tree. Roots, plural, would be her parents. The branch, singular. Would be a sibling, you know, a family tree, which is identified by Larkin, Schofield, and others as her brother, Clonomy Eurgeretis. E U E R G E T E S. Now, I don't know what they tell you in the movies, but this is Ptolemy 3, the trilogy. Luke finds out who his father is. <laughs> I'm not your father. Sorry. You say, well, what would you do that for? Because one of those three movies is called Revenge of the Sith. Alright, now listen. Identified by Larkin, Schofield, and others. Well-known no names. It's her brother, Pononymy Gregorius, or Pononymy Three. Revenge of a Sister's Death. Friend, this is what Hollywood movies steal out of your pocketbook. That the Bible you can get, I mean, the Bible could be as low as a dollar. And, and some places you can go get a Bible for 25 cents. And you don't need a television. You don't need a movie screen. You need it open up and you need to read King James 1611 A.B. He ran for his sister's death, invade Syria. This is the third Syrian war. You can go look it up. To the Cilicia on the Tigris River. In the Bible, 11.7, Fortress of the King of the North. History lays out 
to what the Bible said it would lay out to be. Future is life is going to go all the way back to where Babylon is. The Tigris River, Israel, Syria, Russia. All right, 11 8. 11 8. And we'll stop here for tonight. As Nebuchadnezzar did to Jerusalem in the temple, the Persian kings carried the idols of Egyptians gods gold silver back to persia when egypt was conquered so when persia became in power when they sacked babylon they went into egypt they they, dest they destroyed egypt they brought all the gold and all the silver and all the mo whatever stuff like that okay polymath polymary three brought the idols back and restored them to the temples of egypt Look at 11 8. He shall also carry captives into Egypt, into Egypt, their gods, and with their precious vessels of silver and gold. That's exactly what Paul Demay 3 did. This is years and years and years and years before it actually happened. You know, Egypt is in the future of the tribulation period. That's not just it. Thus his surname became Urgetes. E-U-E-R-G-E-T-E-S, which means benefactor. Now get this. Now look at here. 11 a. We'll be done. He shall continue more years than the king of the north. Ptolemy III outlived Sicilius II by four years. There's your Bible. There's your history. God knew exactly what was going to happen for knowledge before it even happened. And it's going to happen. Something, not in the same character, but it's going to happen again. This is why I trust the Bible and the Lord God Almighty. There's a place in the Bible that says that he's seen the end from the beginning. And then he tells you about it. Exact detail. That's how it goes.